Welcome to the Magical Traveling Moms podcast, where your hosts, Tina and Colleen, talk about all things travel. From theme parks to cruises to all-inclusive resorts and more, they cover news, tricks, and insider tips to inspire your travel dreams. They love to travel and want you to love it too. Find out their best-kept secrets and learn how to make your next vacation extra magical right here on the Magical Traveling Moms podcast. Hello and welcome to the Magical Traveling Moms podcast. My name is Tina and I am joined by my lovely co-host, Miss Colleen, today. And on today's episode, we are continuing our series on multiple multiple generational travel on how to plan. So, but before we get to that, let us take a moment to thank the sponsors of our show, Mystical Dream Travel. Mystical Dream Travel is an earmarked travel agency with Disney destinations, and they also specialize in cruise lines, all-inclusive Europe, and a bunch of other fun places to vacation. So if you're ready to plan your vacation, be sure to reach out to the fabulous agents over at Mystical Dream Travel. You can find them up Find them at mysticaldreamtravel.com or look them up on social media. Hey, Colleen, how are you today? Hi, Tina. I am great. How are you? Me in Pittsburgh, it's actually going to be warm. Like, But our definition of warm is we went from 28 degrees yesterday to 56 degrees today. I mean, I would take it. It's actually been kind of cold here. The last couple of mornings have been in the 20s. Oh, wow. That's a a freeze warning. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's actually bad because all the 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 trees are flowering and all of the crops have started to grow. So I know they were concerned about it. But um, yeah, so it's actually not probably much warmer where I (laughs) am. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it doesn't sound like it. I mean, our poor plants don't know what to do because it's not quite time for them to come out. But yeah, we had yeah. a very warm. Um, I know it's all so, over the place this year, man. Yeah, I don't it know. is. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, let's talk about this. So we are on our next series. Um, as promised for the next several months, we're doing a series on how to plan a multi-generational trip. Um, and so today we're actually talking about the planning process. So I have like seven tips actually on how to plan a very successful multi-generational trip. So let's start. So Colleen, you can see if you agree, I'm sure you might have a couple others to throw in there. All right. So the first thing you need to do when it comes to planning a multi-gen vacation is really determine what, where everybody um, wants to go. Right. Right. That's number one. You have to pick your destination. And then number two is budget. Yeah. So not everybody has the same budget. That is very true. So when you're picking a destination, you might want to consider something that has different levels of room categories. So that way everybody can sort of choose what works for them financially. Mm hmm. That makes so, sense. That's definitely, absolutely. Yeah. You've got to be sensitive to the fact that everyone's family budget might be a little different. Right. Exactly. So I think it's really important to make sure you're taking a look at that in the planning phases of everything. So the next thing, once you pick your destination, you want to think about the activity level of everybody based on the age, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have somebody, if you're taking grandparents and you're taking young kids, like little ones, like two, three-year-old toddler age, you want to make sure that the destination and the activities that you're planning can kind of fit for everybody. Or you want to make sure there's enough for everyone to do, right? Yeah. So I think that's really important um, to kind of take that into consideration because if you're really into hiking hiking and more active, grandma and grandpa and maybe the toddlers won't really be able to do that. So you want to make sure you're planning something that everybody can enjoy, especially if you're doing all of those things together. Well, and the whole point usually anyway, of a multi-generational trip is obviously to spend time together that's the whole point, right? Like right, you're going to go exactly. on vacation with all of these people and your family. 
that you want to, and not to say that you can't some, you know, go off and do like your own thing, but you also want to make sure there's stuff that you can all do together. Cause that's right. the point. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So you have to have a balance of what everybody, uh, what everybody wants to do. So, and then the next thing that comes into play, which I know is a favorite topic of Colleen, is to consider dining food. Oh, yes. Like, where do you want to eat? So if you have, if you're going with several different families, grandma and grandpa, your in-laws or whatever, somebody is bound to be picky in that group when it comes <laughs> to eating. Right. Especially if you're traveling with me and my daughter's going to be like, no, unless it has steak and salmon, you know, I'm not eating there or chicken. Um, so you want to make sure that you're picking um, dining, you know, as you're going through and planning your meals and planning out your days, depending on what you're doing, um, that if you're going to all dine together, um, that you're picking something that has a variety of food so that it yeah. pleases everybody. So you don't have miserable people. And when I mean people, little ones, <laughs> who right. yeah. Eat yeah. what's on the menu. Sometimes um, it's the adults, Tina. I know, well, I know a few picky adults. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's true. You may have a few, I think I might know who you're talking about. <laughs> well, I might know her too. Um, but anyway, um, I get it. So yeah, so you really want to make sure you're um, selecting something that has mm -hmm. a wide variety um, for everybody in the party, you know. Well, and I would also say, um, make sure you're thinking about anybody who has a dietary restriction. Yes, so that's if important. If you have anybody in your family that is, you know, gluten intolerant or allergic to something or, you know, whatever it is, you know, so that, you know, you want to be sensitive to that because obviously right. you don't, you want them to be able to have an option, which thankfully right. there's a lot of places you can go where there's tons of options. Any destination anymore has like those variety and they cater to special dietary needs and everything yeah. like that. Um, so the next thing is you really want to think about activities and if mm. you're doing a cruise or an all-inclusive, so we like to call those excursions, um, it, you want to think about the activities that you want to do, especially if you're going to like an island or you're going on a cruise, um, you want to pick activities that everybody is willing to do. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're doing all these together and it's okay to split up. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but um, if you, you want to ensure that the activity levels are, um, for everybody. So, mm -hmm. and that everybody can have them. And, but I will say this when it comes to excursions, um, things that Colleen and I book often, um, and suggest to clients, they usually will tell you if they're good for, if there are a lot of walking, um, or if you need assistance, they can help you. If they can't mm -hmm. help you, then it's probably not the activity that for you, if that's something that you need to do. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And it'll say like a minimum age requirement usually yes. too, um, because there's things that are just not appropriate for younger kids and they'll like, just not let you book it for kids under a certain age. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Like you don't want to be booking an alcohol tasting excursion <laughs> with kids, even though you might want some, it's, you just can't, you know, <laughs> with not going to work for you. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So my other suggestion too um, is really think about your overall goals of your vacation and the styles of everybody. So not everybody vacations the same way. Um, so what I mean by that too is some people are like, go, 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 go. We have to have every minute of our day planned. And you have to think about the people you might be going with are more chill, relaxed, kind of go with the flow. So you really want to think through that in the styles and so that you can incorporate everybody's style um, into your vacation planning. Mm. Um, we already talked about budget. Um, but another thing I want to say, this I have two more points here. Okay. Another thing I want to say is it is okay. It really is okay to split up and do your own thing. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, and it might even be a good thing to, to make sure that you factor that time in, like schedule that time in where everybody gets to kind of do their own thing, because it can be a lot 
to spend an entire vacation with your extended family. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it, and people get on each other's nerves or, you know, you just get sick of each other. So you don't it happen. There is such a thing as too much of a good thing. So yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Rooms, like I'll stay in a big house, you know what I mean? So you, you have your own space. Yeah. <laughs> so you have your own yeah. space. But it is okay. So if there are things that like if you're going to a destination and there are things that your family really wants to do that's important to your family that may not necessarily be important to the other people you're traveling with, mm -hmm. it's okay to do separate things. It's okay to have those experiences and kind of break away from each other for a couple hours. Even maybe it's might even be something as simple as dining. Maybe you want to dine somewhere else that nobody else wants to dine. And it's mm -hmm. okay to say, how about you guys dine tonight on your own and we'll dine, you know, and then we'll meet up tomorrow or later in the night. It's okay. So, and I would set those guidelines with a multi-gen trip. Like mm -hmm. here are the things I wanted. That's why it's important to talk to each other. Here are the things I want to get out of the vacation and they have, might have a different view and then make it work. So that way you don't get down there and have like a big argument or disagreement on something because mm. then you know going in. So you can tell we've traveled with our family. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and I think that there is maybe sometimes people feel obligated or, you know, mm. there's an expectation. Right. Maybe certain family members are more opinionated about it that they they think everyone needs to be together all of the time so mm -hmm. I agree with you it's establishing ahead of time before you get down there <laughs> before you're on your trip mm -hmm. establishing ahead of time like and even maybe ha like scheduling it in like saying on this day it's on your own time yeah do your like own specifically thing specifically saying on your own you guys you figure out what you want to do on this day like mm -hmm. we're going to plan this activity and this thing and this thing, but on this day it's free time, do whatever you want. Right. And then that at least makes people feel like, oh, I can do Like I'm free to do that. Like, because they're, they're, you know, when you're with your family, you feel like there's a lot of expectations, a lot of obligations to do certain things. <laughs> yes, yes. And Colleen and I keep it real here. So we don't make it all sun sunshine and roses when it comes to the multi-gen trip. Because we get it, you know, I mean, we've experienced it ourselves. We understand. We all love our family. It doesn't mean we don't love them, but sometimes you just need a little space. So, yeah. so build that in, you know, if that's yeah. really important to Make you. Make it part. Make it an important part of your schedule so that yes. everybody knows uh, this is what's happening and, and everybody can feel real like, oh, oh, I can do my own thing because yeah, yes. everybody might have something that they want to do different, or maybe they just need a break. Maybe you just need, I know I get that way where I'm like, you know what? I really just want to sit by myself, like on the beach with a book and I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to see anybody. I yes. just want to be left alone by everybody, even my own family. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, yes. We all been there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's important to set those expectations as you start the planning process and decide if you're going to be all together all the time, 24 seven, mm -hmm. or if you are someone who wants a little bit of space that you're going to build out that space. And maybe you just say, okay, the morning, maybe it's just the morning, the morning time is all for you or the afternoon or the whole day, yeah. or let's just meet up for dinner later or lunch. And, and it's totally fine, you know, because remember it's your day, it's everyone's vacation. Yeah. So, and it's, yeah. it's you want fun everybody to have you. fun have a good time. Exactly. So don't be afraid to do that. So, and my last tip, my last tip might be the most important one. Oh, okay. So use a mystical dream travel advisor to help <laughs> you plan your vacation, your multi-gen vacation, because I mean, let's be honest, there are a lot of moving parts when it comes to planning large groups. And that mm -hmm. is something we don't talk about with mystical dream travel too often, but it is something they actually specialize in. Yeah. is large group travel. Um, they have firsthand experience. They plan trips where they go on themselves. Um, and, and they also plan large groups for other uh, families and, and corporations, actually. So really, you, I recommend using a mystical dream travel agent or any travel advisor because there are a lot of moving parts uh, when it comes to 
um, planning a trip like this, if you need four or five rooms, you know, everyone wants a lot to organize. Different. Yeah. Everyone wants something different and, you know, you're planning things out. So highly recommend contacting the wonderful agents over at Mystical Dream Travel uh, for your multi-generational trip. So yeah. that is it. Okay, Colleen. Oh, well, I was just going to expand on that yes, because I think something, you know, I totally a hundred percent agree with what you just said mm -hmm. that uh, a travel agent, travel advisor will help you with the organizing. But I think another layer of it is it can be nice to have a neutral party. Oh, yes. Good. That's point. the contact point for everyone. Right. And mm -hmm. when I think of group trips that I've helped plan, um, I feel like that was the honestly the most beneficial to the because usually when you're doing these things, there is a person who started it like a person mm -hmm. one of the family members is like the the person planning it like the person mm -hmm. putting it together, the person whose idea it was whatever right. And by using a travel agent to help you, you're taking some of that pressure off of that person and saying, okay, like, here's the details, but you have questions, you ask the travel agent. If you, when you're ready to book, you ask the travel agent, like mm -hmm. instead of that one person having to be the one, like having to deal with all of the family. And I think if there's definitely a difference when you have a neutral person, that is the contact who's organizing mm -hmm. it versus a family member, because as the neutral person, you can be more diplomatic about, you know, well, this isn't a good option or this is a good option or steer people in a certain direction where like when it's family, you know, there's like, <laughs> there's like a, another element of like emotion, and like, you know, relationship that's different. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, no, I, I 100% agree. And I think in kind of expanding upon that too, if you're the person planning it, you may not know everything there is about that destination or about the room right. categories or about the the resort. Overwhelming you, with the yeah. questions. Yeah. And you could just say, hey, call the travel advisor. Exactly. So much easier to just say, just deal, just go to the travel agent because the, otherwise you're going to get bombarded with right. a, a continuous, you know, questions and what about this? What about that? Problems, whatever. So let the travel agent, let the mystical dream travel agents deal with it. You know, that's like, right. That's very right. good. We're very good at being neutral parties, you know, and like mm -hmm. being that person that can be like the voice of reason or. <laughs> we can talk them off the ledge. <laughs> talk them off the ledge, yeah. Them. But the other thing too, with that, I just want to add one more thing to that is that if you are in destination and something happens, mm. you as the planner wouldn't have to take care of that. That's true too. You know, the, yeah. the mystical it really takes a lot of stress and pressure out of, mm -hmm. because, because this is a little bit more, I should say a little bit more, it's a lot more involved than just planning a regular vacation with just your immediate family, you know, right. so yep. yeah, there's you're a planning lot of, it for everybody. there could be a lot of stress. There could be a lot of pressure mm -hmm. and overwhelming. It can get overwhelming and yeah, if there's issues, whatever. So being mm -hmm. able to have a resource where you can be like, Hey, this person's here to help us. Right. Um, We'll, we'll make it so much more enjoyable <laughs> Yeah, <absolutely. laughs> for everyone. Absolutely. And you'll be glad you did. Trust me. You'll be glad you did. Well, that's absolutely. all we have for this particular episode of multi-generational travel. And you want to make sure you join us next month for our next installment of multi-generational yes. travel tips and how to plan that vacation. So make sure you like and subscribe wherever you listen to pot podcast and be sure to like and subscribe to us over on YouTube and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode. So until next time, may all of your vacations be extra magical.